Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Breach Side Broadcast, home of the finest vox casting either side of the breach. On today's episode, we have the conclusion of student bodies. We pick up the story of Anna Lovelace, who has found herself an unwilling student of Transmortis University, an institution of higher learning that is dedicated to the training of resurrectionists. I hope you enjoy part two of this story, right after this word from our sponsor. This episode of the Breachside Broadcast is brought to you once again by Transmortis University. The university is currently seeking to diversify its student body, opening its doors for the first time to living students. If you are alive and interested in studying the arts of necromancy and anatomical reconstruction, apply today. Albus gasped for air as he sat upright in bed. Shaking hands wiped sweat from his brow. Six o'clock. Always. He swung his legs off the bed, letting the stone floor cool his feet. In the pitch darkness, he stared at nothing and wondered why it bothered him. The sense of having his own internal clock, helpful, albeit out of his control, had never much mattered to him until recently. He went to his armoire. His fingers tested the thickness of worn patches of his suit. His brow furrowed at the sheer amount of old blood staining the thing. It was unseemly. A man of his status, even one of his current profession, should take greater pride in such things. He mulled over the thought as he dressed and stalked into the cistern, hands clasped behind his back. The student body was livelier than usual in terms of motion. Many were gathering in the Hall of Steel, clambering for entrance to one of the larger workshops. Von Stuck considered ignoring it to brood some more, but ultimately his scientific curiosity won him over, and he strode towards the workshop. Students parted for him obediently, but it was clear they didn't like losing their vantage points. The application of the coil does more than provide added stability. The spring greatly improves the transfer of kinetic force. Anna Lovelace spoke in a firm, clear voice before the assembled students. As she instructed, she pointed to the systems that she referenced, only now with the new metallic arm and fingers that replaced her former mangled limb. She still walked with an uncomfortable stiffness, but she had used the weeks of recovery to repair parts from her clockwork dress to proper working order. She even managed to improve on the mechanisms of her own invention, requiring only pieces to rest on her hips to achieve the same gravity-defying goal. While her feet still touched the floor, the pressure and stress on her joints was greatly reduced by the lift from her impressive machine. The iron zombies had packed the workshop to attend her lesson. Some hung back and intently watched Anna like a cat seconds before pouncing on a bird. The rest watched the lesson with rapt attention, their eyes tracing over the mechanical assembly Anna had provided for her demonstration. An amalgamated forearm, partially dissected to reveal the mechanisms cleanly fastened to the bone underneath. As Anna spoke, she touched an exposed tendon with her metallic finger, flexing the index finger of the hand. The arm sprang forward. Its fist slammed into a brick held to the table by a vice. The impact smashed the brick into chunks and powder. She almost allowed a smile. Turning back to the class, Anna delicately pushed her glasses up her nose. I trust the ramifications of this mechanism are self-evident. There was a raspy exhale from the class. Some bobbed their heads in agreement. Some with limbs took notes, and others conferred amongst themselves in broken sentences of strained syllables. Von Stuck stepped aside as the classroom emptied, 
the students returning to their own work and positively twitching with excitement at the potential of this latest breakthrough. When the room was almost empty, von Stuck strode forward. Anna disconnected the amalgamated pneumatic limb from its power source. Another stirring lesson, he said. Top marks, my dear. Or it would be if you were a student. He let the suggestion hang in the air, more out of habit than hope. Anna eyed him. Months of wary glances had gradually softened to the same clinical distance she gave everyone and everything she interacted with. Your approval matters little to me, Professor. Nevertheless, I hope my contributions will be appreciated. Von Stuck ground his teeth behind his lips. Another day, another back and forth, is it? Anna returned to her work, her back to him. It's not a discussion I enjoy, which is why I don't instigate it like a broken record. Von Stuck winced. He ran a hand down his suit, suddenly preoccupied with straightening out a wrinkle. It's very irregular to have guest lecturers, however accomplished. Not so accomplished, Anna said. Half of my demonstrations are ignored, and the classes I am permitted to attend are impossible to understand because few of your students are capable of speech. In my defense, most of the applicants strain their larynx to non-functionality during the conversion process. Your winged enforcer seems capable of speaking, if she ever wanted to. The valedictorian is made of sterner stuff, even before earning her iron. You are very much like her in a way. Your devotion to research, the pursuit of knowledge... Anna snorted quietly. Von Stuck smiled as he began cleaning his goggles. Though from your bearing, I'd say the knowledge isn't as important as being appreciated for it. Anna tensed and turned to glare at him. Meaning what? Now it was his turn to look down on her. He strode toward the table, ignoring the implications of getting too close to her anti-gravity equipment, and quickly looked over the amalgamated pneumatic. It really was a marvel of engineering, and Anna had a surgeon's talent for blending flesh and machine. He tried to keep his face impartial as he spoke. I suspect that your induction into our school had less to do with what you see as the untidiness of the conversion process, and more to do with being lost among the masses. Anna's fingers twitched. Mind your tongue, Professor. You mentioned that half of your demonstrations were being ignored, von Stuck said, abruptly changing the subject. It's not like my students to be truant. She continued to glare at him for a few moments, and then let her face return to its neutral disinterest. I suspect they still see me as prey. He shook his head. They still have the dents you left in skull and steel. They learned their lesson and I forbade them trying to convert you on their own. After three weeks, Anna added. They might not see you as one of them, von Stuck said. You are an outsider. I believe the answer is less obvious, she said. I believe it is a lack of communication, not from myself, but from you. Oh, von Stuck asked unenthusiastically. He knew what was coming. He started for the door. I've been in this sewer for months, Anna said. I've studied. I've contributed. And yet still you refuse to share the entirety of the university's accumulated knowledge. You'll seem to know plenty, von Stuck said. Some of the students in today's lesson have been present since the earliest days of Transmortis. Yet they hang on your words like freshmen. It's refreshing to see. Anna ignored his attempts at distracting flattery. If I had full access to the library... I would not spend weeks preparing for lessons on topics your students already know by heart. He allowed himself a chuckle. Why, Miss Lovelace, is it infuriating to you not to get what you want? She worked her jaw. Considerably. But between the two of us, my request is far more reasonable. I think not, he said. This is my school, one founded on traditions older than this city itself. If you wish access to the grand totality of our knowledge, then you will have to go through the proper channels. Anna's growl rose to match his. Then perhaps our professional relationship is over, and I will dismiss myself from this sham of a school. A sham? Von Stuck echoed. 
There was a sudden shriek of metal from somewhere nearby, followed by the clamour of the student body, all of them rushing up the cistern towards them. Careful, Professor, Anna hissed, one hand working the mechanism on her hip. I am Professor Albers von Stuck, he cried, marching toward her with deliberate slowness. As he did, the iron zombies slithered into the room, moving about on coiled snake-like bodies or scythe-like limbs, a horde of undead flesh and gnashing machinery. They coiled behind him, ready to spring forward. With a word, a whim, I could have you torn piece by piece. I've always been curious by psychological theories about which side of the human brain contains knowledge and memory. Perhaps I'll have you bisected vertically and see if two students can match the hole they came from. Anna pinched her lips. If you take another step, I will do more than damage your precious school. I'll bring this entire sewer down on your heads. See if you can study your way through a few hundred tons of rock. The standoff took on an uncomfortable stillness. Only the steady tick, tick, tick from Anna's dress measured the moment. This argument is pointless, Anna intoned. Has a single week gone by where we aren't prepared to kill one another over what we want? Von Stuck felt his fingers impatiently tapping against his thigh, jangling the ring of tin whistles he kept there. You've been a terrible disruption to the comfortable routine of the school, Miss Lovelace. Anna held her chin up. Is that such a bad thing? Yes, Von Stuck snapped, wringing his hands. Since I opened its doors, this school has not seen fit to suffer the audacity of the living. The students that came before you were like you once, gifted, resourceful. But they found their way here, found their purpose. I want to give you yours, Anna. Like any good teacher, I want you to be everything you can possibly be. My purpose is for me to decide, Anna said. I've suffered the whims of men who've stolen what's mine by right before, and I'll be dead before I bow to you or anyone else. They both hesitated, mulling over each other's arguments. Anna was the first to act. She relaxed her fingers over the controls of her dress only slightly. Perhaps it isn't me who's disrupting your school, von Stuck. He eyed her warily. What do you mean? She glanced at his assembled students. You've grown complacent, Albus. Look around you. You've built... You have a fine school. I would be lying if I told you I hadn't felt a kind of academic kinship here that I've not felt in all my life. Knowledge is savored. Talent is nourished. And I'm free to commit myself to my work without fear of such stingy trifles of the law or someone stealing my work to publish it as their own. So why do you cling so tenaciously to that pulse of yours? Von Stuck asked. She straightened her back. Because it's mine. I want to keep it as badly as you want to keep yours. Don't think I'd miss the fact that you haven't converted yourself. I'm sure any of your student body would be capable of it. Von Stuck licked his lips. I... I had considered it. Of course you did, Anna said her voice surprisingly gentle. But you decided otherwise. May I guess why? You love this school. He winced. I am a man of academia, he confessed. I open transmortis to immerse myself in the science of resurrectionism, the secrets, the joys of discovery, always. He rubbed his temple. Anna cleared her throat. And yet, day in, day out, you leash yourself to the same old methods. You bring them down here and you convert them. Or dissect them. Another of your iron zombies joins the ranks and the cycle starts all over again. That's not discovery, Albus. That's repetition. You're in danger of stagnating. Preposterous, von Stuck dismissed, waving his hand. He fumed over the very thought of it, even as his mind drifted over the students around him and the old bloodstains in his suit. The same configuration of students. Sinew, steel, viscera. Sinew, steel, viscera. Listing them out in his head, it turned into a mantra that rang over and over. Six o'clock, every day. Von Stuck shuddered, suddenly revolted. He tugged a kerchief from his pocket, 
and began to clean his goggles. All right, perhaps she had a point, but he wouldn't just give that point to her. And I suppose what? You should just have free run of the place? Of the library? That would solve all the school's problems? Anna's lip twitched. My solution is a simple one. Stop hacking every student you receive to bits. Let them learn and contribute and benefit from both. How many resurrectionists would kill repeatedly to have access to Transmortis? Von Stuck balked. I never turn away a student. You never let them go. She gestured with her chin at the tin whistles on his belt. He patted them. This is for summoning purposes only. Oh, please, Anna said. The only thing holding this horde of yours back is you and me. Her dress clicked as if to punctuate her point. Think about it, Albus. Your school is suffering for lack of talent except what you dragged down here. Up above in the streets, there are resurrectionists doing so much with their knowledge. Think of what they could share with you, what you could share with them. Another silence hung in the air. Von Stuck rubbed his chin and pondered the possibilities. I confess I have thought of connecting with minds in the private sector. Most of what I've heard from them is grapevine gossip at best. What I wouldn't give to have Dr. Douglas McMorning deliver a speech or two. Anna blinked. McMorning? The guild pathologist? He ignored her. And those creations of Mr. Leviticus, inspired. Top marks for that man, despite the crowds he runs with. To say nothing of the resources a living student body would offer, Anna said. More reliable news from the source. Resources that aren't as easy to come by in the sewer. She raised an eyebrow. Off-campus facilities for field testing. Von Stuck inhaled sharply. Astronomy, he murmured. Starting to get the big picture, are we? Anna asked. He gave her a pained look. Then he turned to the students. Assemble, everyone, assemble. The students didn't move. They were already assembled. Von Stuck stood up straight. It's come to my attention that there has been a lull in our performances of late. Now, now, I don't want any of you to start pointing fingers at one another. The fault is my own. If you'll forgive the vernacular, I've become a bit too set in my ways. Old age, perhaps. No matter. He started to walk back and forth, his usual habit while lecturing. So, from this day forward, we'll be implementing some changes. Not all at once, of course. Trying something new. Experimenting, you might say. I know some of you will not agree with it. Some of you will see cause to resist. Normally, I would welcome this kind of adherence to tradition. But I want you all to think of this as a challenge. To take ourselves out of our comfort zone and embrace hardship. I'll present the new details in time. Once I've gone over them with the University of Transmortis' newest career counsellor, Miss Anna Lovelace. He gestured to her, and Anna blinked back at him, incredulous. I... what? She's speechless, as you can tell, Von Stuck chuckled. He turned to the students, who hadn't moved since he'd begun speaking. Now settle down, quiet down. I know what you're thinking. Old Professor Von Stuck has gone round the bend. But once the new policies have been put in place... I think you'll agree that she and I have only the best intentions for the university. Wait, Anna said. I didn't agree to any. Oh, come now, Miss Lovelace, Von Stuck said. You made your point. You don't wish to be a student, and you've convinced me. I agree, you'd make a much better teacher. And you get to keep your limbs. And that pulse you seem so worried about, here, here. He started clapping, and the students joined in clanging their metallic limbs together and staring at Anna like starving cats before a plump mouse. All right, all right, von Stuck said. We've wasted enough time today. Shouldn't you all be in class? Off with you. Anna Lovelace stood under the stars, waiting while the Transmortis students gathered her belongings and equipment into crates. The streets were empty, but in the distance she saw glowing street lamps watched the air cars gliding over downtown, and heard the distant rumble of an arriving train from Malifaux Station. In her hands, 
she gripped a rolled-up piece of paper, wringing it as though it were a man's neck. One man in particular. Sneering, she unfolded it to reveal a wanted poster. An artist of middling talent had provided an unflattering rendition of Anna's face and a more detailed depiction of her clockwork dress, something that would be more likely to turn heads in public. For the crimes of illegal amalgamation and murder. And that was the mere tip of the iceberg of shake-up she'd learned of since returning to the surface. Changes in the guild, in the union, the outlawing of mercenaries, and from what she'd heard, war had broken out on Earth. She heard the whistle of a train, a mournful sound of departure. Von Stuck had allowed her to come to the surface for the first time in months, but only to gather her own equipment and belongings. The university was to be her new home. But for several minutes, she stood watching the lights of downtown, considering the possibility of running. Her dress could hold the iron zombies at bay while she fled. Maybe board a train for Earthside, far away from Malifaux and Transmortis. One of the snake-like iron zombies approached, coughing up a few syllables. She wasn't sure which was more disturbing, that the thing was attempting to speak to her, or that she was slowly starting to understand the choked voices of the students. She hugged her arms and nodded without looking back at him. I'll be along in a moment. The student of Viscera hesitated. She heard the strain of its mechanized tail, the telltale ding of its spring mechanisms tensing. Anna put a hand on her hip, against the controls for her upgraded gravity well, and turned to face the iron zombie. Its eyes burned into hers, the angry hate plain even on its deadened face. Is there something more you wish to share? she asked in a steady voice. The iron zombie pounced. Blindingly fast, it cleared the small balcony in less time than it took to blink, but Anna had already pulled the trigger by then. The engine on her hips hummed to life sending out a surge of gravity that hammered the leaping zombie like a speeding freight train. The blast slammed it flat against the door behind it, and then threw it. Wood and glass shattered as the zombie tumbled to the floor of the dilapidated apartment that she'd once used as a safe house. She strode forward, fearless of retaliation. Von Stuck had offered her the tin whistles he used to summon his students, but Anna left them in her pocket. All of you, to me. She spoke clearly, but didn't bother to shout. They had heard the commotion, and had already started to gather. Curious, they surveyed the scene and their dazed comrade before turning their sights on her. I understand some of you have been conspiring behind my back, Anna said, mustering all the unimpressed disdain she could. Well, now it's time for your next lesson. Transmortis has changed, and it's time for you to change with it, or... She drew up a swirling black mist from the ether. It twirled around the enhanced blade attached to her robotic arm, and lashed it into the stunned student of Viscera. The creature recoiled in pain, its body ripping and tearing at itself. The iron zombie tried to scream, but could only wheeze breathlessly before curling its tail into itself like a frightened dog. A heartbeat passed, but she again considered running. Instead, Anna met the eyes of the other students. I am not some instrument of study. I am not a student to be converted. I am not weak. I am not kind. I am your teacher. And you will respect me, or I will peel you apart far slower than you would me. She gave the carrying zombie another shove with her gravity well, smacking it against the wall. Take this lesson back to the rest of the student body. Anna Lovelace will not tolerate disrespect. Pick him up off the floor and get ready to leave. We're done with this place. She strode out of the room, leaving the open balcony and the lights of downtown behind. Albus von Stuck yawned. It took him several moments to realize he was awake. He sat up, blinking and confused. His brow was dry. His breathing was calm. His memories weren't overloaded with half-impressions and fading memories of nightmares he could never recall in his conscious moments. He hadn't felt this rested in ages. Fascinated, he lit his bedside lamp and checked the clock. 5.42, he giggled. How positively bizarre. He stood up, stretching tired limbs. His body felt light on his feet. What was this energy? 
He skipped to his armoire and opened it, marvelling at the prospect of having choices in his wardrobe. His old suit had received some much-needed repairs. It was still in tatters, he had to admit, but it was far more presentable than it had been in some time. Most of the blood was gone. The leather patches at the elbow were fresh. Beside it was a new suit, a mismatch of clothing gathered from the last batch of potential students. It was mostly colour-coordinated, and he adored the tie. Von Stuck giggled. What the wear? he asked. Oh, the possibilities. He considered the new suit, but decided to try out the old one. No need to go all half-cocked at once. He dressed, then belted on his tools and organized them carefully. He was looking forward to a day of new beginnings, new semesters. The system was abuzz with excitement. News of von Stuck's new policies had spread quickly, and now the students were eager to see them implemented. He stopped one of the students at Sinew. Has Miss Lovelace returned yet? The hawking student bobbed its head once. Good man, von Stuck said. He went to seek out the career counsellor in her new office, and saw the entourage carrying in box after box of equipment along with student 227. What's this? One of the students dragging its kin grunted and shrugged. Von Stuck made a face. What did I tell you about the new policies? He chastised, wagging his finger at the injured 227. That, my boy, earned you a failing grade. You're lucky she didn't pull you apart there and then. I take it you've learned your lesson. 227 hissed wearily, its head bowed under the prospect of a poor grade. Very good, von Stuck said. Bear it in mind. In the future, I won't be so lenient. He went into Anna's office, a spacious former supply closet and drainage sump. Settling in, are we? Anna turned from overseeing the students assembling her desk and unpacking her luggage. I think this space will be suitable, provided we keep the moisture to a minimum. I can have them redirect the vents, von Stuck said. I thought you said the equipment was from a safe house. This looks more like an entire workshop. Well, we may have made a stop on the way back, Anna said. One of the guild's evidence lockups for confiscated amalgamations. Oh ho, von Stuck asked. Top marks, my dear. Ah, uh, well, nice job. Anna pushed her glasses up her nose. As she did, von Stuck realized that the gesture was the closest thing he'd ever seen her do to a smile. I'm glad you're back, von Stuck said. I wanted to show you something. Anna hesitated, but then fell into step behind him. He led the way to the hall at Sinew. As they approached the main dissection laboratory, a clamor of voices, some screaming, some pleading, filled the air. The lab had been reorganized to make room for several large cages, within which had been gathered an assortment of people. Most sported some nasty bumps and bruises, but they were all intact. Three hulking students of Sinew stood watching the cages impassively, What's the meaning of this? Anna asked, raising her voice just enough to be heard over the din. A new semester, my dear. We're implementing the changes we discussed. Von Stuck eyed the students eagerly. I've got nothing but high expectations for all of you. Who the hell do you think you are? One of the bigger specimens roared. Do you have any idea who I am? Von Stuck winked at Anna. I think he'll be a good contender. Contender for what? Anna asked. Why, these are applicants, Anna, von Stuck said, clapping his hands together. The first of many. Why are they caged? Oh, well, von Stuck started to clean his goggles. The thing is, this is a very prestigious school. We can't just have anyone come in off the street. The cream of the crop will rise to the top, as they say. Meaning what, Albus? Von Stuck chortled and nodded to the students of Sinew. They opened the cages. All of you gathered here today have come seeking a scholarship at the University of Transmortis, von Stuck said, ignoring a few of the protests. And all of you would have it. I've already made my mind up about that. However, the nature of your education will depend on a few variables. The first being, whoever can reach the valedictorian in the center of the system without being caught. Those who do would get to keep their pulse. Those who don't... He nodded to the students of Sinew. We'll still find a way to fit most of you into the student body. The applicants hesitated in disbelief. 
Have you all wax in your ears? Von Stuck asked. The test begins now. He took out a whistle and blew it. The undead of Transmortis came alive, hissing and snapping. The student applicants fled. Most of them. A few dropped to their knees, screaming in fear or trying to close up the cage to find some measure of safety. The big one von Stuck had pointed out hurled a blast of greenish fire at one of the students of Sinew, blinding it long enough for him to dart away, leaving a middle-aged woman to be torn apart in his stead. Ho oh, oh, ho, von Stuck laughed. Good show, my boy. That shows initiative. System 7 fell into an echoing chorus of screams and howls that made its way to the Southgate slums above. At the end of the day, Anna and Albus oversaw the induction of the new living students. All three of them. The remainder would soon be inducted as more traditional members of the student body. That did not go precisely as I had hoped, Anna said. I thought we agreed to open the school to all students. We did, von Stuck said. Change takes time, Miss Lovelace. And my students and I are a bit set in our ways. Maybe in a semester or two things will smooth over. You have to admit, though, it was a brisk day of testing. Anna shrugged. It was educational. And look, von Stuck said, pointing to a young man who'd not been torn apart by the iron zombies. He stared at nothing, his eyes blank. That one lived too. He didn't do anything, Anna said. I don't even recall seeing him during the test. I think the students ignored him, von Stuck said. Imagine, not even worthy of dissection, poor lad. But he did survive. He doesn't look quite up to the snuff for academia, though, does he? Anna sighed. Perhaps a janitor? Oh, quite so, quite so, von Stuck agreed. Someone fetch him a broom. Or a mop, Anna suggested. And bucket. Albus laughed. I'm feeling so inspired. What should be our first lesson? He held out his elbow for her. Anna stared at it, then at him, and rolled her eyes before hooking her arm around his. First, I would like to look through your library proper. All of it, Albus. I won't be teaching repeat lessons again. It was embarrassing enough when they all wanted to kill me. Very well, very well. But I go dibs on the anatomical reconstruction courses, von Stuck insisted. I've been struck with such ideas concerning the uh, chassis of our new students. I'd like them to be the first to receive new forms befitting the University of Transmortis. Then I would like to propose a field trip, Anna said. Perhaps offering some off-site education to a few prospective students would help us find more talent worthy of breathing. Enticing, von Stuck said. I'd be sure to let everyone know with my next broadcast. Do you think Dr. McMorning would be interested? I imagine so. I heard he lost his job at the Enclave. Scandalous. Tell me all the details. That's it for another episode of the Breachside Broadcast. Join us next time for more Tales of Malifaux.